Hey everybody, welcome back to JDM World. As we build out the theater down in the basement, uh, you know, we're taking things piece by piece. And the next step really is to expand the, uh, the, the subwoofer implementation that we have in the environment. So, you know, today we're using a couple of uh, definitive uh, towers with 15 inch subs, and, and those are okay, but we really want more of a, uh, a more powerful and, and authoritative uh, bottom end when we watch movies. Uh, you know, you can go either uh, sealed or ported. Um, ported's pretty good, uh, but you know the low end really rolls off under uh, under your port tuning. Um, uh, so a lot of people will do like mini Martys and that kind of stuff and go for really high SPL. Um, but for me, you know, I'm really interested in in a really low end, really strong. So I'm looking at doing two 18 inch uh, sealed boxes. But to power that, we need amplification. So uh, you know, scoping around uh, and looking for a cost effective way to really power two uh, UM18s and uh, I found a ancient beat up iNuke amplifier on sale for a hundred bucks so I bought this guy um, and uh, he's a iNuke model NU6000 it is not the DSP version um, I've got a mini DSP 2x4 HD that I'm going to use uh, for those purposes um, but uh, you know this is uh, this I think will be a great tool just to play with and and see how this works in my environment now the first thing we need to do to this though is uh, replace the fans because this model is the older model and the fans are super super loud so in this video we're gonna go through and rip out the old fans put in new fans and uh, we'll try and do a sound test just uh, anecdotal listening with ears and a microphone uh, to see what the difference is between old fans and new ones thanks <laughs> Okay, we're gonna fire this up and see if we can get some sound off this to, to hear what these fans sound like uh, out of the box, so to speak. I'm gonna plug this directly into the wall here. All right, now, this guy has a push button on the front. Lights turn on. And this is under no load obviously right so right now the uh, microphone is maybe I don't know a foot and a half or two feet away from the fan itself and it's it's loud it's very loud I'm gonna step away from this and, and see how far I can get before you know I really can't hear it but this is what it sounds like up close Yeah, I, I walked as, as far as away, away as I could, you know, 30, 35, 40 feet, and uh, <clears throat> it's still quite quite audible. So this is the uh, the problem that we're going to overcome. So I'm going to rip this thing open and hope I don't shock myself to death and, uh, and replace these fans. Uh, first thing is uh, make sure this is unplugged before you do any work on it. So very important that this is not plugged into the wall at all. Um, and let's, uh, let's see if we can get into it. I've got just a regular Phillips head screwdriver here. This lifts up and off. And we have our guts, right? And here are the two fans that we are going to uh, to replace. <sighs> There's some spider webs in here. <sighs> A little bit of dust. <sighs> Doesn't look too terribly dirty, though. Let's just uh, take a look here. Okay, this fan, this fan are both connected, and it looks like they roll up to these two connectors for the fans. 
and what you'll notice is that they are hot glued in place so whoever designed this really didn't want these things falling off and I thought that was spider web but that's actually hot glue residue um, as they stuck that glue on stuff now this is this is some spider webs but yeah it's interesting there's there's definitely glue all over the place so they, they glued in the power header to the power switch um, and these fan connectors the controls to the front as well so next thing is we're gonna see if we can get these headers off so I pulled out the trusty um, hair dryer to see if I could get this glue to uh, loosen up a little bit and uh, it uh, it gets soft really really fast it doesn't take a lot of heat at all for that stuff to uh, um, to get gooey so what I discovered is that the uh, the connector on the uh, fan it has a you know has a, a little little catch on it on the connector itself so it's not on the uh, the system board so to speak so what I've done is I've heated this up and I pull this one out um, so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get the rest of the stuff to loosen up and pull out and uh, I'll let this run it's gonna be super loud um, so I'm gonna disconnect the microphone All right, so we got the connectors undone, and I don't think I got too much glue inside of the headers. So hopefully the uh, the fans that are on the way will fit. We'll find out when those arrive. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can do the rest of the removal of this fan. There's a little more glue that I need to loosen up on these cables and take out these screws. So I'm gonna work on that. fans in here if we need to all right so that's uh, that is probably 90% of the hard work on removing the fans and replacing them on this unit uh, we will um, get the uh, the new fans ready and see how difficult it is to put them in I'm just looking over the board now to see if there's anything of interest to note or any problems that I see on the board because this is an older unit um, it doesn't look like anything is damaged. <sighs> doesn't look like any anything's leaking that I can see. So hopefully this guy is going to be able to do a little bit of work for me on my UM18s. Okay, got some fans here, and uh, now the, I ended up with uh, four pin fans, and the headers for this are two pin. What I discovered though is that you can actually pull the entire connector off the board, the whole all the plastic piece, and just leave two pins poking up. Now um, that seems to be okay for one fan because I can take one fan and uh, plug this guy in, um, but there's not enough room for two, and uh, I'm plugging in where the uh, the, the yellow and black pins will connect. So plug that guy in like that and then let's put some power on to this bad boy and turn them on and this fan should kick on and start working. Yep, so we get airflow, spins up automatically, um, but the problem is can't get the other fan to pl 
plug in just right. So I think I might have to do a little cutting here. So let's see. Yeah, it just won't. It's just too tight. The headers are just too close together. And uh, I've already cut this off, so I'm just gonna have to figure out how to uh, splice these together. So I'm gonna give that a shot and uh, I'll come back. So at this point, I've got both the fans set in and uh, I have the airflow reversed now. So originally the fans were drawing air from the outside through the back and pushing it out the front. Well, since I'm gonna mount this in my AV cabinet, I think it's gonna be better to draw air in the front um, like the rest of my devices um, and exhaust heat into the back. So I've got heat coming out the back now. I've got uh, this fan plugged in um, to the header directly and then um, I uh, took the header off the old fan, cut it, and uh, then spliced it on to, uh, to the new fan. I don't have these bolted in yet, but I'm gonna turn this on and see if this works. This will be the moment of truth. We can discover together if, uh, if these fans are gonna turn on and spin when I get power to them both at the same time in this configuration. Here we go. Hey, magic, and I'm getting air, and they are much quieter than the fans before. All right, I'm gonna bolt these in, and I think we're in good shape. All right, I'm gonna tighten all the rest of this stuff up, and, uh, and I think we're in business. I don't know if you can actually see the fans spinning, but um, I've got this thing fired up and uh, new fans are going and it is very quiet. It is a, a quarter of the the sound uh, that, that the other fans were less than that. I mean, it's, it's much different. You can see the old fans on top. We've got the grills on and the top on the unit. Um, so I think at this point we're ready to, uh, to, uh, to get this guy and put him into service. And just uh, as a little additional information, for those that are curious about how you uh, deal with the audio input for these, you just need to get a pair of uh, adapters that are RCA to balanced input, and you simply just plug these guys in, um, and, and they just they just fit right in. So we can do this, and that's it. So that's uh, th that's how you connect this guy to your. Uh, to your um, AVR and then for uh, your speaker outputs um, instead of having uh, you know five void binding posts they've got speak on connectors and you'll just buy uh, I would recommend if you're, do, you're doing a DIY, DIY subwoofer that you actually put this type of connector on your subwoofer and then you can just use speak on to speak on kind of uh, I hope I'm saying that right um, connectors and just plug them in and not have to worry about anything interesting and it'll, it'll look just like pro um, audio equipment. So uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed this and find it found it useful, please uh, uh, both like and subscribe. Thanks.